the scenario of, of heavy metal in Finland was there is like a child play. I think it was like a very, very small guys wearing tight pants and long hair and some, uh, how do you say, scars and everything and tattoos and everything. Uh, what do you remember of the Finnish scenario at that time? Non-existent. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, of course, we had our like hard rock groups and all that, like uh, which are still like Pergint is legendary in Finnish rock scene and all that. But um, kind of a heavy metal scene was a listener scene, and the consensus in Finland at the time was that well, nobody really here can play or sing that stuff, but not, and they cannot even if somebody could, they can don't know how to record or make the sounds for that kind of stuff and all that. And as young guys, me and the other tarot boys, we kind of set out to change that and managed to pioneer some kind of a movement. Yeah, it was very hard at the time because there wasn't really a scene. There was uh, there was two clubs. There was Lepakko, which was a kind of squat house with a stage and they, they had these metal massacres. And then there was Spandau Metal Club that was every Thursday. And there was Tony Taleva who invented Tuska later on. He was started there also, his DJing. And uh, that was uh, every Thursday, that's where all the musicians met. Bats like Stone and uh, yeah, uh, uh, right. those 80s, uh, Tarot, that, that kind of band. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they tarot, started tarot, tarot, uh, actually. Uh, yeah. They are the first metal teams in Finland to you know, do something, something like that. Of course, Marko Hedel and Tarot. Tarot is maybe the first heavy metal band from Finland that I remember hearing. I've of course heard late. Ah, maybe maybe Stone was even because my uh, big sister used to bring these cassettes at home. I guess one remained Stone, but at the moment I thought it was really really shit. Uh, in a Christmas night, uh, a Christmas evening, my uh, brother bought me. Uh, one record I remember that very clearly. It was uh, One Hail and First, and it was like amazing. I, I did uh, saw some videos of uh, David Lee Roth making uh, moves in the state, and it was like wow for me. And I was like, uh, I want to be like him. <laughs> so the metal scene was pretty much underground, and also the fact that. Um, because there wasn't the internet, so it was a lot harder to find new bands. So there was like these Cine magazines, you know, made with the, uh, what's what's that in English, you know, the photocopy machine. Oh yeah, and fanzines. You, yeah, fanzines. Yeah, fanzines, yeah. and you, you found them from like certain music stores, and you were like, oh, what's, what's new around? And, and then you had to try to find like people who actually have that music and people were trading demos a lot, you know, like, oh, have you heard this band? And then this one C cassette goes around like, I don't know, 20 guys. And usually the, you know, the quality of the sound was like, I love this song. <laughs> With no established metal scene in the 1980s, most of what Finnish metalheads had was coming from the USA and the UK. I started listening to metal when I was around 10 years old, in, in 1984 or so. That, that was actually a time that, if you, if you would take most of my, especially male friends at that time, small boys and teenagers, most of them would have been listening to some kind of hard rock or metal music. It was really popular. I think that in the 80s there was a big, big popular stream of, of metal music and hard rock in Finland. Thanks to MTV, thanks to some magazines and people were listening to the, sort of the American bands, the British bands, all the classic bands and so forth. Like, like every, every kid in our suburban place, we were into Kiss and Wasp and whatever. Like, of course Iron Maiden was later really, really big influence for everybody. And, it's like Iron Maiden is something in Finland that goes from father to son or to daughter in that sense. 
every every small kid in Finland knows at least somebody who's been heavily into Iron Man. I was listening to bands like Matchbox and Crazy Gun because my uncle gave me the albums. And I was like, yeah, this is the best music in the world. And then I heard in the radio, I heard Venom, Witching Hour, and I was like, what the fuck, what is this shit, that I need to get this? So I went to the record store, I got to the Venom album, Welcome to Hell. I was listening to Witching Hour, and I was like, man, this is like the evilest shit that I have never heard in my life that compared to the rock and roll, Matchbox, Crazy Gun, I was listening. The positive intake of the American and British heavy metal in Finland was the first step to create a metal scene. Bands like Stone, Tarot, and Zero Nine, among others, were responsible for this beginning. Yeah, I remember those uh, those days uh, where people came, like, they have uh, putting your hair like a balloon and going there. Oh, yeah, this is good. And, yeah, I remember. But yeah, that, that was the Finnish scene in the 80s. Of course, by the end of the 80s, we had Stone, where Mr. Open up while I further on went to play in Bodum, now and not anymore. And Stradivarius got their um, German deals uh, just before 90s or around changing to 90s and getting to Japan and all that. So things started to spread around. And then, of course, we have to remember that Finland hasn't been metal country for not, not very, it was about maybe 15, 20 years ago that we, our first bands had, had really, really started to be somewhat successful in the international market. But before that, like in the 80s or even early 90s, if you would have said abroad that you come from Finland, that nobody would have said, oh, Finland, metal country, not even within the metal, metal community. It all really started more sort of more extensively late in the, in the late 90s and, and early, early 2000s. While grunge took over the world in the early 90s, in Finland, it was different. You know, we are stubborn people. I mean, like, there was there was people who liked grunge, but there was also a lot of, especially the guys who were, uh, who grow, grew up before the grunge, were kind of like, oh, what the hell is that shit? And, and kept metal alive, in a way. They were like, a Amorphis, of course, Stratovarius, Xysma, I think, did something. Of course, there were a lot of these uh, like small underground tours going on all the time. And uh, I remember many, many like Finnish bands touring, for example, in Sweden and in Germany and Poland whatsoever. But it wasn't uh, basically in the news at all because it, it was underground and nobody gave a shit. And then at some point, people started to realize that, hey, actually, there might be some potential in these bands uh, in Finland also, and you have to first you have to make it abroad before you're actually accepted in Finland. I mean, it's maybe stuff that you don't really hear in our music. Well, Amorphis surely, you know, because of the the themes and and the folklore and and that that kind of got myself and us much deeper into to this direction. And, and I think the same stands for many of these kind of Finnish, call them what you want, folk metal bands like Enziferum or or so forth. Uh, I think Amorphis has played a huge role in that kind of like a few, few years earlier in the 90s to, to kind of combine folklore into death metal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean Stradivarius was the first one to do, do Latin America, for instance. Uh, from what I understand also from the world, so Stradivarius was one of the first bands to go to Latin America. Also from Finland, <clears throat> doing very well in Japan already, like in the mid 90s. Stratovari sort of was a very big part of building the whole infrastructure of taking uh, bands like Nightwish or, or Chill Bottom or the bands that came after. In 96 or 97, we used to hang out in this music shop uh, in Helsinki all the time, and some of the guys knew that Stratovari was guys too and they they were always telling us stories about the band and how huge they are in like in brazil or spain or we were like what what the fuck and they only played like uh club gigs in finland and 
in the big picture, if you take the big picture, it's definitely the night wish that, you know, made the Finland like the heavy metal country. There's no other way. And the other one is, of course, Stratovarius. Because this, they, they, they are not the music what we are playing, but you cannot deny the influence and the impact what they did for the Finnish heavy metal. I think one of the reasons there is that that we have a great history of good metal bands, like like you know starting with Valtteri, um, Amofis was also one of the first ones, uh, Stratovarius was one of the early, early ones. Of course, Tone was. Uh, there were a lot of Air Dash, a lot of cool trash metal bands, and and very innovative metal bands in Finland who created their own style as well. And um, I think that's one of the reasons why the metal genre started to grow so big. Also metal bands were first uh, bands ever that became popular abroad. Of course we had Hanoi Rocks, but that's also kind of glam rock mm -hmm. kind of stuff, close to metal. And they show the, the kids that, you know, hey, from this small country where you think you can't get nowhere, <laughs> you can go. If you, you know, if you, if you work hard and, you know, do this thing with the, with your passion, you can go, and I think that also inspired and motivated uh, young kids to, you know, to practice hard and work hard, and that's the, the result is that that we have so many metal bands. It's amazing to be on some kind of um, worldwide metal meetings like Seventy Thousand Tons of Metal or Wacken or Hellfest or Metal Camp or wherever, um, and checking the lineup, and there are so many Finnish bands always. At this point in time, what we knew as the birth of Finnish heavy metal was acknowledged in and out of the country. But something bigger was about to explode. Then also there was so many more clubs in the 90s and they started to book metal bands like in Tavastia and uh, these places that I started to take metal bands and there was new clubs opening. So there was actually quite many places to play in such a small city. It was acknowledged quite quickly also uh, globally that, wait a minute, there's this small country that, you know, people didn't even know that existed. All of a sudden, there are these bands like the, the big metal medias in Europe starts to review their albums and, you know, give them, you know, 10 out of 10 and stuff like that. So, so definitely something happened. It's not like the lone cradle of the uh, metal explosion in the late 90s. I think Helsinki is more, more important that we Finns know. Uh, metal-wise, out out there in the world. At certain point, there was just so many good bands coming out at the same time from this really small place. Pretty incredible, actually. But people are always asking that why why there's so many metal bands in Finland. But I just simply don't know the answer for that. I don't know why. It's hard to explain. I don't know. Maybe because Finnish music players noticed first that. The rock and roll music and metal is the only way that you can make your voice heard. It, it was something to start on and start something to develop, develop somewhere. I don't know. People just get stuck to it and started to make it better. There's a lot, lot of metal bands in Finland and new, new bands are coming all the time. And, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> no idea why. Well, I have a one idea, because uh, maybe because the 90% of the year is dark and it's shitty weather, weather and uh, cold, <laughs> and uh, people want to write sad songs because they are depressed because of that. <laughs> Why isn't metal so marginal in Finland? I would say that in Finland it's, it has been much more easier to be a metalhead than, for example, in, in Brazil or whatever like countries where there are fewer, fewer of those uh, subcultures around freely going. It has much more, I think, to do with like religion and politics in general and how like liberal your country is. If we take the good old 90s again, 
uh, it was basically like a safe way to rebel. You are rebelling against, not, not that much against society as the punkers did, but more against like religion and stuff like that. And in Finland, religion hasn't really been very huge since the, let's say, since the 70s. I think one of the most important reasons why this is kind of like open-minded here, because Finland isn't really a religious country. The majority of Finnish people don't give a shit about religion. Upbringing uh, of the people or kids has to do something with it. And well, depends where you are from Finland, but usually Finnish families aren't that, that religious, you know. In Finland, uh, metal is much more mainstream than in, in some countries. Like we go to places like Latin America and, uh, and metal is still kind of has that very kind of dangerous underground vibe to it that, that maybe was true in the 80s or something here. But I think in Finland, it's metal is like up there with, with pop and art music and indie rock and electronic music. It's like one, one art form among others. Finnish society in general is quite open and tolerant to any kind of diversity of minority or minority and and whatsoever so so also the heavy metal subculture is not seen as anything you know particularly dangerous or or uh, uh, scary probably not anymore I mean, I think early 90s, it was more chaos and more fun because there was no real shablon how to do it. It was just everybody did what they could and tried their best, you know. But then it got so technical later on and, you know, people... When there was these bands who made it big, then people start to follow them and then everything sounds the same. Well, definitely, like, things really, really started happening metal-wise in this country in the, you know, after the mid-90s. As I said, in the mid-90s, we had Sentence and Amorphis that were like uh, the main bands. But then just, you know, think about it, what kind of bands were were founded just, you know, after that. We had him, we had uh, Children of Bottom, Nightwish. They were born, born most of them, in the later part of, uh, of the 90s. So yeah, things definitely started happening. You know, we had all kinds of uh, genres also appearing that, you know, we didn't, you know, we, we never had in Finland before. But then by the end of the 90s, that's kind of where, where it all kind of exploded into a bigger thing with, with bands like Children of Bodom and Nightwish and, and these kind of like him also, like even if it's not really a metal band, you know, their impact has still been huge. Also to that part of, of like that kind of Finland or the turning the interest of, of kind of rock, Bring and rock flag. rock audience. I think a lot of people, for instance, in the U.S., without him, they would have probably not found their way to to maybe more extreme or heavier Finnish metal bands. So I think they've also kind of paved the way quite a bit for for a lot of bands. We had like in the mid of '90s, we had some great ideas. Like some dude wanted to mix opera with power metal, and another dude wanted to mix power metal with black metal. And another pe person wanted to play like Metallica with cellos. Those are now like the three biggest bands from Finland. And those are three like really crazy ideas. Whenever I heard them the first time, it was like, come on, that's crazy. But it's honest and it's nice and it creates something new. So if there's somebody who has this kind of idea and not just wanting to be like, you know, Trier of Bodon or like, Mertley Crew or like Slayer or whatever, but create something uh, unique. Well, I, I, for example, I've been a big metal fan uh, since I was a teenager. As, uh, I've been a fan of heavy metal as long as I've been a fan of classical music. So uh, we had another cello band called, uh, nowadays it's called uh, Total Cello Ensemble, Ensemble and uh, it still exists. It's a group of six cellos and I was a member of that group in the very beginning of 90s. And with that group we played um, all kind of music from tangos to Jimi Hendrix, you know. And therefore I started to think, okay, if we can play Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze with the cellos, we should be able to play for home the bell tolls from Metallica. So that was kind of the starting point. We, we never thought about uh, 
forming a band. We were just more like a bunch of friends who all played cello and you know we, we all shared the passion for metal music and we wanted to have fun together. So it was more it happened more accidentally that you know we for example we never tried to get a record deal. But after the mid 90s we had all of these you know bands that you know used melodies in a complete different way. Um, more black metal bands, more uh, death metal bands, more power power metal bands. So, so yeah, something definitely happened. I think nowadays it's sort of some kind of quality label that if you come from Finland, you are a metal band. Sort of as a starting point, you probably have a very high quality, and, and people in the metal community are interested in what you're doing. Um, that's why I said, said earlier that, uh, that I, I thought that the, the atmosphere. In, in Finland in the 90s, it was very open for all different kind of experimental stuff. The biggest thing before Tuska, and uh, Tuska started really small. Uh, the first was, was in 98 in Tavastia, and then already in 99 it was in, uh, it, it, it was in the center of the city. If I remember correctly, it was like uh, the next year there also. Uh, but then, yeah, in 2000 it was still in the Helsinki Center, then it moved to Kaisenem in 2001. And those, those were the days of Tuska, really. The Kaisenem theme was awesome, you could bring your own booze there, and it was really great. They were like, because there wasn't any like metal festivals except for Numerok in, in Finland, and you couldn't even call numero of that, basically. Tuska was completely solely metal festival, and it was in Helsinki. And I lived in Helsinki at that point. Now, how cool is to actually go with your own drinks to watch metal bands, and then later go to a bar, and then take night train home? It was like, I remember numero. It, it kind of served a bigger stage for the small metal bands to go a big stage and perform to the larger audiences. And of course that improves a band, it improves your live performances and what you can actually achieve with the metal music. When you talk about metal and you talk about festivals, of course, you Tuska is, Tuska is the high season of anyone that listens to rock and metal in Finland. It's like the... For, for me, for instance, uh, I have been there every year except for the two first years. I was there for the first time when I was 17. And it's, it's you know, it's still, I've been there, I go there every year, every day, and it's still the most fun weekend uh, of uh, of the year, easily. I could I could replace any other weekend, but I would never replace the Tuska weekend. I would cancel anything else. beginning of the 90s, I, I really wanted to find everything was in metal. And that is the biggest reason why, why I actually want to, you know, take this group now and, and, and try to actually, you know, mixing up every metal genre without any boundaries or anything like that. So When I was young, I hate black metal, <laughs> but now, now I like. But you like Venom. Yes, yes, yeah, Venom. It was an 80s time. Yes, but uh, it's just sorry, a black metal. Uh, sorry, I uh, and I, I meant uh, Finnish black metal. Yeah. I never understand it when I was young. For me, the main difference that I see is the bands in Finland. They come not only playing well, but they know how to create a concept since the beginning. So it's not they want to be like a cover band that just want to play. They want to. They try to create a product. They try to create a band with a concept, with a logo, with the image, with the nice pictures, with nice um, artwork and good music that's all connected. So like this, you have a product and then it's easier for a promoter, easier for a booking agents, easier for a manager to to hire this band, to, make, to, to somehow do a, a partnership. So that's why you see so many bands coming from in, uh, from fin Finland because they when they bring a product uh, when a band comes they have a product. It's sort of significant also from the business point of view, and it has a big impact on the Finnish brand again. If you think about how many people are abroad, they know more about Finland because of the metal music, and they are interested in Finland. And they're interested in coming here to study or to 
to see the festivals or concerts or whatever they are doing. So it's also some kind of business impact that is really coming from the reputation of Finnish metal. Uh, I came here to, to start my PhD research about heavy metal music in this way. Of course, it was heavy metal who brought me here. Do you think you could have done it in Italy also? No, n- not one possibility on earth. So early 2000s, or it might have been late 90s, I can't remember exactly. We came here in Helsinki, we played a club show, and um, there was a group of kids outside, like in the afternoon, like two, three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm talking like 15 year olds, like a big crowd of them, 30 of them hanging around outside, went out and I took pictures and signed autographs. and. Uh, And that was the first time I, I think I had actually really started to see the audience for Anthrax starting to get younger was here in Finland. Like it was a bunch of kids wearing our t-shirts and had patches on their jackets and and uh, not just Anthrax, all metal, like kids. And I wasn't seeing that really in a lot of other places on the planet at the time because thrash metal was hadn't made a big, let's say, comeback yet. But here, it already seemed to have done that. Definitely on a different level where I used to. But then, then of course, maybe the biggest leap happened with once. And Nemo single, which like put us big leap forward. That was already when I was part of it. There was a lot of shared pride and joy in that. For us, it was a big surprise that when we released the album, that it became so so big buzz up around it. Like you know that in Finland we were playing on the main TV live shows and stuff like that, and uh, suddenly different countries started to release the album, and uh, people felt that it's something revolutionary. And we were like, I, we don't know about it because for us it's the most natural thing to do to play the music we love with the instruments we can play. I think the reason is that we don't have like a, in that sense, like a scene that all the bands sound like the same. For instance, you had, you, st- you had the Seattle scene or or Bay, Bay Area thrash metal scene that bands sounded pretty much alike. In Finland, uh, there's always been a big variety of what the bands do. There isn't like a certain Finnish sound. There's uh, all sorts of uh, metal. Yeah, then the album came out and suddenly we were on the Finnish album charts, which we were like, what the fuck? Because this is very like marginal music. But but yeah, somehow we made it <laughs> to the album charts with our first album, so. During the first decade of the 2000s, when many Finnish bands were touring around the world, being finalists and winning important contests such as Eurovision, heavy metal became so mainstream in Finland that even politicians were talking about it. Buy these records, metal is awesome. Let's see a Finnish prime minister doing, uh, how should I do, like this? Yeah, I'm doing like this, I'm a metal man. I think the, the huge, like the rise that happened with Finnish heavy metal worldwide in the 90s is something that made it like, you know, acceptable because even politicians and people in important exports started to pay attention for, to this thing. And then you got your prime minister doing the horns and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess we're more socially accepted here. I don't know, it was so funny because suddenly people who kind of dissed you before, then you were, they were dressed the same, like the same bands. And uh, it was kind of household thing to be into metal, you know, everybody, grandparents were showing the horns and uh, politicians and whoever, you know. Of course, like we were talking, rock music was the big thing at the time. Uh, even our prime minister did this with Lordi, like in 2006 or something like that. So that's when, that's when rock and roll died. <laughs> <laughs> they used to say that even when it's worse, heavy metal is best. But in 2005, I think every, it, it was done in so like for all the wrong reasons, because people were trying to make money and follow. They were making copy bands of 
you know, Stradivarius, Tyrion from bottom, um, him just trying to get in, in with the people, in with the money. So then you have to take away all this. You remove the, all the money, all the bars, all the fame, all the business. And what you're left is, is real people making real music. Everybody, every grandma was into metal, you know. It's okay, that's fine, but it, just, it went, it became uh, media sexy. And every, you had uh, heavy metal in the newspapers, and which is kind of cool in a way for, for the music itself, but it, went, it was a little bit too much, you know. I do want to point out uh, that Finland has uh, perhaps the most heavy metal bands in the world per capita. Also, the result of becoming mainstream, for me, it felt that in general the metal music started to be a little bit old-fashioned and uh, a little bit safe in a way and, you know, didn't have so much the, the kind of attitude that that you know that it's really how could I say that it needs to have some kind of feeling of anarchy mm -hmm. and and an intention to change something that's for me that's metal I grew up with the trash metal from 80s mm -hmm. you know and that was all about it. it was punk music of that time I mean we were talking with my friend Gas the other day about it that if we would have been teenagers like 2005 would we have listened to metal I don't think so I mean, when we started to listen to it, it was the rebellious thing to do. And, you know, only your school, there was maybe three or four people who were into metal and the rest thought that you're a complete idiot. Especially in Finland, the mainstream festivals don't book metal bands anymore like they used to. Some do, already, but there used to be a lot more anyway. And uh, DJs took over. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like the whole way we consume music has changed completely. Even since we started, we started out from, well, in a kind of very, very, very bad point of time, actually. But, but still, from that point that we were mainly selling CDs, and that was like our prime thing, to, to like, you know, selling music isn't like really relevant in, in a way for for us anymore in the in the same way. So it's. Changing to be become actually more about the touring. Internet changed the whole thing completely. It's so easy, kind of like easy to reach out for the new bands or listen to whatever type of music you like. But it's kind of like also made it the thing that it, sometimes it's really difficult to find good new bands. Of course, things are different in a way that you can never go back to this isolation time where like nobody knew about anything. Because we have internet and internet in that kind of way has given a lot of other things, but it has also ruined some nice mysterious things. There are no mysteries anymore because of internet. Well, of course, Alexi Laiho. That's easy, he's done. Brilliant job and like hard work for a long time. Henry yeah, from really Henry hard. from Musoro is one of my idols. Actually, it's 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 funny because he started later than me, but for for me he's like the best composer of Finland. Tommy Yolchen from Amorphis. Based on the face, I will of course take Ville Valo because he's he's a cute guy. But <laughs> but I guess you know Alexi Laiho would be uh, really good from Children of Bottom. Um, you're they... saying he's ugly. <laughs> no, no, Alexei is super cute as well. I was just saying the villa is the cutest one. <laughs> Tuomas, uh, no, no, uh, no, definitely. Uh, Alex Lyon is the first one that comes to mind uh, because also uh, uh, Children of Bodom is definitely metal. And Children of Bodom is, you know, uh, also appeals to, I mean, him does it as well, Nightwish does it as well, but uh, I still think that Chino Bottom is most metal out of those like really big bands coming from Finland. Marko Hietala. I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> He's done very much to the Finnish rock and metal scene. 
If you take, yeah, I think then you have to go see who are the successful one, and obviously some somebody like Alex Laiho or Thomas Holopainen would be like a very obvious selection. I mean, he would have to be a diplomatic person as well, and very metal. For myself, of course. <laughs> yeah, I changed my answer to Marco Hieto. <laughs> Um, I guess he would agree. <laughs> yeah, ma, 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 yeah, Marco is the real deal. Uh, then, of course, Evo. Evo um, and Spine Farm. You know, the, for me, the, it comes more from the actually from the kind of business side because those, those were the guys that they created uh, possibilities and platforms uh, for Finnish metal music to really grow big. We're really down moment at, at this point. I don't know what's going to happen next. I believe some kind of rock and roll sensation will come and rise. If it's going to be heavy metal, I don't know. Hard to say, you know. I'm turning 40 this year and uh, I feel heavy metal is pretty boring, you know. It, there has to be something new that really makes you makes it feel fresh again because it's usually just doing the same thing all over again, you know. I'm doing the same stuff in life. That's what they did in the 70s or 80s. I'm gonna do it again and even better or something like that, you know. Inventing something new is really, really hard. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but I really hope it's gonna be for rock and roll because, I don't know, it's liberating music. At its best, it's really real and fresh and, you know, empowering and purifying. The rest of us who have been around, we just do what we do, basically. It's it's up to the younger generation to change the world. Finland has been always very strong with metal music, and and uh, metal music is something that really touched Finnish people. Of course, the, every music style, you know how popular it is and how unpopular it is. It, it goes in waves, you know. There are there are periods that now the metal is not mainstream anymore, which I think is good because metal shouldn't be mainstream. It's made to be. Um, if, if it's only if it's too mainstream, it's too safe. Yeah. <laughs> mainstream music is very, very often very safe, and which I see at least in my case with Nightwish, with Tarot, with anything that we do. We do aim to do good songs and all that, but they're always on the side of integrity. Please yourself first. That when you're when you've done a song that you're pleased about, whether it lasts for two minutes or ten minutes, then then it's okay, and then then you publish that, and if people like it, then it's honest, then it's there with the integrity. So what we're still able to do here is to avoid the mainstream and their fucking business. Okay, folks, stay true to metal. It's the best music in the universe.